When you're learning layouts with CSS, there's a lot of focus that's given to doing floats, doing flex box, doing grids. But something that gets uh, missed quite a bit is columns. Um, way, way back in about uh, 2007, 2008, uh, columns were added to CSS so that you could take content and break it up across multiple columns. Like if you were to create two paragraphs and then give them a width and then float them side by side, that was the original way that you could create columns. Now there's an actual CSS property that we can use. So let's take a look at this HTML here. Uh, I've got a main element inside that, a couple of paragraphs, and then there's a section with the heading and two paragraphs. So this heading and these two paragraphs are inside of another section element, and then these ones are just inside the main. So let's look at uh, putting some columns. Let's take this first paragraph here and break it up into a couple of columns. The first property you want to know is column count. This is how many columns that you want to have. So if I was to say four, it would break it up into four or three or two, you know, whatever you like. So column count two. Now this is going to continue to keep it at this two columns regardless of how small I make this. So you can get to a point where this is very unreadable because there's so few uh, pixels available for each of the columns. For that reason, there is a column width property that you can add in here and you can set sort of a minimum width I can say okay the smallest I want any of these to be is 150 pixels wide once it drops down below that point there we go now it snaps back to a single column once it gets below this width if you make it something larger so say 300 pixels then it's going to be when I get over 600 pixel total width, that's when it snaps and becomes this. Now you can combine this with media queries as well. So you could say that uh, if my layout is uh, narrower than a certain amount, don't use columns. Or if it's bigger than a certain amount, that's when I want to add the columns. It's up to you, but column width is your minimum width and once the browser can no longer provide that minimum width for a column, it will snap back to just the single column. Okay, now, um, you can do a shorthand. So there is a shorthand columns property where you would enter both these values, just like this. So the first one is the column count, the second one is the column width. So this is the shorthand. Okay, so with that done, now there's a couple of other properties having to do with this space in between. There is a column gap and there's a column rule. Column rule is a vertical line. And this is just like the border property. So you can say if you want it one pixel, five pixels, how thick you want it. Typically, you're not going to do anything more than one pixel, but the option is there for you. Solid, dotted, dashed, whatever you want, and then whatever color you want. There we are. So now I have here one column rule, one line. And this gap right here between this rule and this, by default, it's one EM. But you can change that by changing the column gap. And that is the amount of space. So if I said 2 REM, now I've got 2 REM space between the beginning of this text and this rule all the way down. On this side, it all depends on the length of these words. So this is going to carry along and you will have the same space here, but it's going to look like there's a lot more space just because that's the way the words broke in this paragraph. So that's my column rule. This is my column gap, the space on either side. If I were to put, uh, let's put a border on this paragraph just so we can see where the padding and everything shows up. Okay, right now I've got no padding appearing on the left and right of this paragraph. You can see like this. There's a little bit on the top, a little bit on the bottom, but nothing on the left and right. So if I was to add padding, sorry, one REM all the way around. There we go. Now I've got one REM 
padding added all the way around, but it doesn't get added in here. This is just the column gap property that's providing this space. All right. One more thing to look at here. I want to use this example down at the bottom. I've got the section that contains the heading as well as the two paragraphs. We can come into the section and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to have three columns down here. Now, this is the default behavior. If we look at the HTML, the section is the thing with the columns. So all of the content inside of here is broken up into the three, including the heading. If you want the heading to move across, we can come in here, target this child element, and say, I want this thing to have a column span, just like an HTML table. We can say, hey, you know what? I want it to span all the columns or none of the columns. So the default is none, which means it gets packed in there with this. All will spread it across the whole thing. So column span, one other option that we've got inside here. And that's CSS columns. So it just allows us to let the content flow. Create the columns and allow the content to flow instead of having two paragraphs and floating them beside one another or using flexbox or grids or something else. Just having one element and all the content inside there creates the columns. All right, so I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you found it helpful, please share it with other people. And as always, thanks for watching.